during the days of uh, the Lord's crucifixion, he denied Jesus three times. But after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we see the same Peter stood up and preached to the crowd. So the Holy Spirit was the first one which uh, the, the, the church historians think attributed the spread of the Christianity. And he even preached a couple of days later, he preached in front of the, the court or the leaders who persecuted <coughs> Jesus, who put Jesus to death. And he knows very well that the same people, the same leadership, can also put him to death. But he was not afraid. And why is that? How was that? Because of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus already promised, I shall have the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you can preach me, starting in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the rest of the world. So that's the first attribute to the spread of Christianity. The second one is a life found, the transformation of life of those who have followed Christianity, those who have come to Jesus in faith, those who have been transformed. And people see that in their own eyes. And that has caused them to also come towards the cross. No. And the <laughs> third factor which I'll, I'll be touching on in my sermon today is the words or the messages of Christianity. It's different from the messages of other religious religion in the world. It's a message of grace, a message of love, of the everlasting love of God, the Almighty God, who is able, who was able to come and rescue mankind from our sin. And that's the third factor which has caused Christianity to rise. It started only 2,000 years ago, over about 2,000 years ago. Some uh, Asian religion, they, they, are, they are older than Christianity. But Christianity is only 2,000 years old. But now it's the biggest religion in the world, over 8 billion in my last search on the internet. It's over a billion, over a billion Christians compared to other religions who started earlier. Now Christianity is the biggest. And those are the three, the main ones, the three main ones. There are other factors, but the theologians have pointed out those three main factors. That has caused the Christianity to conquer all religious systems, starting from the Middle Eastern, coming to Europe, and spread, spread over and even to our uh, lovely nation here, Fiji. As we know, our four forefathers they were cannibals and they fight tribal wars. But when the Christianity came, that has stopped. We were not conquered by, by a foreign country. No, we were, not, we were not conquered by them. What conquers us is Christianity. Mm -hmm. Those three things. The pouring of the Holy Spirit, the transformation of life's witness among followers, and also the message of the cross, which is different, completely different from other religion systems, religious systems. Mm -hmm. And the power in that message, the question I'm asking today is, has the power gone? Has the power diminished in this age? Before we got our, 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 our problems here, uh, cannibalism and tribal warfare. And the Christian message was able to conquer that. My question here is the Christian message still has the power to conquer the problems that we have here in Fiji. Drugs related crimes. Prostitution, you know it. It's all out here in the face. And we see the rise 
the rice and all these problems that we have in Fiji. And also we have the rise in the number of Christian denominations rising and uh, it, should, it should have a, an opposite effect. The more Christian denomination, the less the crimes are, but it's not. It's rising together. The more Christian denomination, the more problems we have, the more crimes we have. And the question is, has the power of the gospel completely diminished? Have we lost the power of the gospel? Is there, any, no, is there any more power in the gospel that we preach? I know that the Holy Spirit will lose, cannot lose his power. And the lives of us who have elected children to follow Christ, that is a clear, that is a, 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 a solid witness to others, solid testimony that God is working us. But what about the gospel? Has it lost its power? Has it lost its thing? As we see the rising crimes, rising things that we go through here in Fiji. And that brings me to the message today. What is the message? And I believe from listening to, to our Talatalas, our preachers, and Talatalas from other denominations, I believe that our Christian messages have been distorted. Although we have Jesus as a focus, but we are focusing on the wrong. We are focusing on the wrong things about Jesus. And I believe that's where we have gone, gone wrong. We have come away. We will come away from the true gospel of Jesus and his cross. The crucified Jesus. I've heard lots of sermons in Fiji and through the internet, through the Facebook, and I hear Jesus being preached, but not Jesus and his cross. The crucified Jesus, because that is, that is where the rest of our, 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 our belief is. Jesus and his cross. Now I just want to point out three, three items in, in, in my ship. In my mission, in my center today. The first one is we establish our relationship with God through the through grace. We establish our relationship with God through grace. Through his grace. Now Bible reading today, we hear Paul writes, always I thank my God for you, for the grace of God which has been given to you in Christ Jesus. It is only through the grace of God. It is only through the, uh, the, grace, of, the grace of God. As we know the story, when Adam and Eve, they fell for temptation, the Bible says in Romans 5, 18, because of the sin of them, we are all sinners. So we are all born sinners. I'm sorry to say that. Whether I believe it or not, we are all born sinners. Someone might say, oh, look, I grew up, I've been a good man, a good, good boy, a good girl. I do not do bad things. I go to church. I do not swear. I do not uh, drink alcohol, so I'm a good person. So I'm, I'm okay, I'm justified in the eyes of the Lord. But the Bible says, because of Adam and Eve, so we cannot escape that. We cannot escape that. We have to accept, we have to believe that we are all born sinners. And because of that, because of our sin, we have been separated from God. We are no longer God's children. And that's a very sad story. We are separated from the blessings that He can give us. That's a very sad story. But we are thankful. We are thankful 
from God. He did it alone through His grace. And I, I believe you all know what grace is. It's the undeserved love. God loves us, even though we do not deserve it. Even though we do not do anything, we did not do anything to get, to receive that love. But love, God continues to love us. And He sent His only begotten Son into the world to die so that you and me can have everlasting life. And that's the truth about us. The story of God leaving His heavenly realm to come down into this world. You know, He didn't have to come down, but because of His love and because we, He sees us, that we are helpless, we cannot do anything to ourselves to save us from our sins. So He chose to send His only love to come, to have only His Son to come and die on the cross. I want us to see that. God's grace. We will see this, yet He loved us. We want to see the story of His coming. He was born in the manger in Bethlehem. He walked through life. And he was going towards Calvary Cross. The story goes that a couple of days before he was crucified, he was praying. He was praying. In the Mount of Olives, he was praying. And his prayer goes like, Father, please take this cup away from me. You know what the meaning of his uh, prayer is? He said, Father, he said a way to save the world, to save mankind, to save you, to save human, but please don't take my life. Please don't take my life. That's the meaning of his prayer. And as we know, he was praying and he was sweating blood because he knows what he's going to go through. In the, next, in the next couple of days. And we're so thankful that towards the end, at the end of his prayer, he said, let thy will be done. And that's Jesus through his grace. He chose to go through those difficult moments, go through the pain and the sorrow so that you and me can be saved. And that's grace. Amen. And they say we're well, leading up, leading up, uh, him up to the to the cross, and they beat him, and uh, probably you probably have, have uh, watched Mel Gibson's uh, the peak of the story, the Passion of the Christ. Eh? And that Mel Gibson researched everything about the death of Jesus Christ, and he put it forth to us to see. You know the rope that he was beaten on. At the end of the road is a metal ball and in that are spikes, metal spikes coming out. And when they when one is landed on, on Christ's body, on Jesus' body, and is taken up again, part of his flesh came out. Yet he had the power. He had the power to free himself. He can just speak. And the Roman soldiers will die. But he did it. He chose not to use that power yet. He chose to go ahead with his death. And as he was lying there, he can feel the pain. He can feel God living him and he prayed, Father, why have thou so forsaken me? He had the power. He had the power of the cross. But he chose not to use that power just because of his love for you and me. That's the grace I'm talking about. It's not, it's not, a very, it's not very easy doing that on the cross. The task of saving you and me is not that easy because Jesus has to go through those pain, those agony, so that we, me and you, are saved. 
So we establish that relationship with God through grace. And now, let me ask a question. Are we all saints? Is that grace for all the world? My answer is yes. Whether you're a believer, non believer, Muslim, or Hindu, Chinese, Fijian, Kailau, Kaibiti, Kaibay, is dead on the cross, was for all of us. But, listen, this is your part, this is our part, this is our part. Just like a gift, if I give this gift to Gashi, Gashi, this is my gift to you. It will be no use to him if he sits there and I'm offering the gift here. He has to get up, receive it, and start looking at it so that he can know, he can benefit from the gift. So saying this, we, you will, he has died on the cross for all of us. Over 2,000 years ago, the gift is there. The gift he has given to, given with the cross, this is, our sins are cleansed. That's the biggest gift. No one can do that. Even all the things we do, thinking that we can save ourselves, we go to church every Sunday, we go to Matasiga every week, we come and give our soul here. Nothing, nothing can save us. Only God's blood. Jesus' blood on the cross. That's the only way we can be saved. Secondly, we are members of his kingdom. We are members of his kingdom. And thirdly, we are called sons or children of God. Just imagine that like, a couple of years ago there was a wedding between, uh, the royal wedding between uh, Prince Henry and, and Kate. As you know, Prince Henry came from a royal family, the British, uh, the British royal family. But Kate was just a commoner. His young girl was just a common. Just imagine the joy, the happiness when he, in, his, in her mind when he, when he thinks, okay, after this wedding, I'll be a member of the royal family. I'll be eligible for all the privileges in the royal family. And as we know, the British Empire is so big, so rich and wealthy, and Kate will partake in those privileges. But you and me, you and me, through the grace of God, we can be privileged to the heavenly gifts that is, is God for us. And that's a great story. And that's good news to us. And not only that, we are gifted with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sealed us as we Come and believe in. As soon as we believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will dwell in us to help us in our daily walk with life. We, we with Christ. We cannot walk with Christ alone in our own power, own strength. We will fall. We cannot continue that. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. To empower us, to give us strength, so that we can do God's work, we can walk the walk that He wants us to do. And not only that, the ultimate gift is when we finish from this world, when we die, we know there's a place Amen. prepared for us. And that's what we should be grateful for. That should be the biggest joy that we can have in this world. To know that while we are still living, we've got a place on here. Amen. Some will think, no, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. When I come up here, they open the book and say, oh, look, you've done this, you've done this. No, no, you, you are drunk. No. That's a free gift of God. Only through the grace of God and us believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. The second point I want to make here Grace gives us access to God's riches. 
in our scripture reading today for, for the road I have good reason to do, to do so because of him oh sorry because in him you have been enriched in everything in every form of speech in every form of knowledge in as much as what we promised you that Christ could do for his people have been proved to be true in you. As I mentioned, because of that grace given, and because you have believed in that, he has given us his riches, his riches which surpasses anything in this world. We have a friend and we have in Jesus, as we say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Our parents may not be around. Our close friends may not be around. And we are in need. We are in our, in our, the hour of need. But we know for sure that someone is around to help us. In our school work, children, if you come to Christ, if you come to Christ in faith, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you say that, he's got to help us. So in school, when things go, when things are difficult, you can pray to God there and then. We have a focus, a focus, <coughs> someone to guard us, to guard us from, from the evil one as we pray in the Lord's prayer. Protect us from the evil one. So we are able to get there, we are able to get a focus because of God's grace and our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. We have a comfort, as we know, during times of sorrow, times of tears, when everyone is far away, we've got someone there who can comfort us. We've got a rock to cling to during a time of pain. We've got a rock to cling to. We have a mountain which we look up to, and we are able to get that only through the grace of God. We also have a shepherd which leads us to green pastures and through the valley of death. That's amazing. I was uh, preaching at the funeral service. I was touching on Psalm 23 4. So I walked through the valley of death, I saw, the, I saw fear of heaven, evil, because thou art with me. Dear friends, when we come to Jesus in faith, when we receive his grace in faith, we are sure that he is still with us. And when we walk through the valley of death, we won't fear anything. We will even welcome death. I preach in an English service, uh, service in Canberra, and one of the one of the members is 102 years old, very old man, Eric. He went to the wars, very old, and he's a strong Christian. And when I came there uh, the last, when I asked, "Where's Eric?" and he said, "Oh, Eric is passed on." And after church, as we have been tea, they told me the story. Some of them were at the bedside just before he, uh, he died. And he was saying, Oh, I just don't know why the Lord kept me in this body for so long. I had wanted to go home early, about 30, 40 years ago. I just don't know why he kept me in this body for so long. And that's the attitude of someone who has come to believe in Jesus Christ, he will not fear or she will not fear death. We will welcome death. We will even want death to come quickly. I was joking the other day. I'm over 60 now. Sometimes I see the life here. I say, oh Lord, please come. Oh, I come early. Because it's the place of joy here, away from all the, the the bills and what you have in here in this world. Away from all the problems, all the things we go through. Lord, I can't come home early. See? That's what happens when we come to Jesus in faith, when we believe in Him as our Savior. We will not fear death. 
We will even welcome them. Please come. I'm ready for you. So dear friends, that's why we need to thank God of all the God, of all the goodness that He's given us, all the gifts that He's given us, all the peace, the peace that you know that although you're going through difficult times now, maybe your bank account is, is not that good, maybe the cupboard is empty, the fridge is empty, but you know you have peace within you, knowing that, okay, all this will go soon, I'll be with my Lord. And that's a peace that surpasses anything in this world. Knowing that while we are still in this world, we've got a place prepared for us. Now the third, and the final point I want to make today, grace gives us hope for the future. Grace gives us hope for the future. Paul <coughs> carried on, he said, the result is that there is no spiritual gift in which you lag behind. While you eagerly wait for the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will keep you secure right to the end, so that no one will be able to impeach you in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is writing. Once you come to the to Christ with faith, we believe, and you are saved. You are saved forever. No one will be able to impeach you. That word impeach you. Impeach, I mean, I think it came out. <coughs> Well, it came out a couple of times during the, after the uh, election in the, in the United States. Donald Trump, when he was still in, in the office, he said they're going to impeach him, which means that they found, they found something to convict him on. Probably some of you have gone through, have gone through uh, the police yet. Yeah? The first thing we must find, he knew, you see a crime that you committed. So they can take you, they can put you to court unnecessarily. First of all, the, the Department of Prosecution has to fight. They go through their books. able to impeach us only through grace. Mm. But grace in Jesus Christ. And our turn is to believe in that. So as I close my sermon and ask you, please come to, come to Jesus Christ. Kneel <coughs> down at the foot of the cross. <coughs> believe in Him as your Savior. Believe in Him as your Lord. And that's the only way. That's the only way you can receive the gifts of God. It's not through members of the church, not through doing good things. As Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we are saved 
by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Not by any things, not by any works that we do, but only through Jesus Christ. So friends, come to Jesus. Kneel at the foot of the cross and receive his gift through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, which has cleansed us, which has enabled us to be members of the God of King and uh, the Kingdom of God, enable us to be children of God. <laughs> Only through the grace yeah. of Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord bless the word that we just said. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to come together and worship you. We also thank you for the words that you prepared for us today. We want to thank you for the, for the love, for the grace you've shown us over 2,000 years ago. Through the life, love, life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. And we ask that you be with us. Help us as we look back towards the cross and see that's where we start our faith, our journey. Only through the crucified Jesus. Mm. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.